record recording now um, so once again the video recordings um, are the, the video recording is actually because somebody emailed me in another period and was like hey I have to miss class um, and so I'm recording today's class um, and um, yeah, so let's see. So new new business, um, Cornell notes. We have some Cornell notes to take. Um, these are going to be the for the unit. Uh, they'll be due April fourteenth, and there's a template here, um, and we have this this PowerPoint, um, and um, and we'll we'll go over some of that today. We'll go over some of it. Um, we won't go over the whole thing. We also have um, this PDF worksheet. When I open it with Google Docs, it um, makes it kind of... Some things are in, in strange places. Um, so here's the here is that. And um, in a previous class, there was a question about Cornell notes, whether you're, uh, if it's if it's okay, because there's there's a like a Google Doc template in the Cornell notes assignment. So if you, if it's more useful to you to make notes on paper, and just take a picture of those uh, to submit, then that's totally fine. Um, the point is to have you guys be um, engaged and and allow for you to be like silent, like a silent participant in class by taking notes. Um, and um, yeah, and with that, um, we're going to go into this this PowerPoint. And it's a good PowerPoint, but it's it's a PowerPoint, um, and so we'll see, we'll just see. Um, and we're also we're also going to have um, the possibility to um, like I am also going to have some handwritten notes um, because the. The thing that the handwritten notes does really well is it teaches a process. It teaches a process. Um, and there's a lot less of that for this, like there's a lot more kind of information in this, uh, in this lesson, in this unit, and a lot less of the process. And so we're going to be talking about acids, bases, and pH. And we have some guiding questions that we won't talk about all of, like what? is an acid. What makes acids dangerous? Uh, is acid rain an issue? We won't talk about that for today. Um, and um, what does pH balance mean? These are kind of like just ideas for the unit. These are ideas for the unit. Some of them we'll return to. And today we're going to really concern ourselves mostly with that first question. What is an acid? So we're going to want to be able to um, understand the acid base theories of these three guys well these two guys because remember stuff in pink is if we hand write the notes does it have to be in cornell form or can it be my own form of note taking ooh ooh if you have another how about this send me what you have at like the end of class and I'll get back to you, okay? I want to see what you have. I want to see what you have. It has to, like, because I, I, want, I want it to be something useful. <laughs> That's the thing, if it's handwritten. Yeah, like, like the, the point of the Cornell notes is to have, like, notes of, on, like, one side, like, the divided column thing, and you put questions on the other side. So, like, um... So it makes it easier for us to find questions that you have. 
Like that's the, that's the thing. So I want, I want to see organization of some kind. That's the main thing. Cause it's really easy to be like, Oh, my own form. And then it's, it's like disorganized. I say as the person with the super disorganized handwritten lecture notes. Um, all right. But remember stuff in pink. So this guy, Lewis, we're going to ignore for now, even though he's super important for the whole concept of acidity and base alkalinity, bases and acids. Um, we're going to be able to, at the end of the unit, identify strong acids and bases and calculate their pHs. We're going to calculate the concentration of a strong acid or base from its pH. We're going to start doing that today. We're going to start it. It's on the assignment. We know that it's hard. So like, that's all we, we know that it's hard. It's difficult. So like we expect it to kind of come in pieces, come in, it'll be, it'll be eventual. Um, and, uh, let's see, we're going to be able to calculate the pH and ion concentration in a polyprotic acid. We're going to talk about what that word means polyprotic. And then we're going to gain some familiarity with something called a titration curve and the selection of an acid base indicator. And those will be in future lessons. So we'll start with some definitions. There's this guy, Arrhenius. Arrhenius, he's a Swede, Svante Arrhenius, Svante Arrhenius. And he comes along and he says that um, acids are gonna produce hydronium ions, H3O plus, H3O plus, when uh, introduced to water. So you dissolve an acid in water and it produces H3O plus. It releases hydrogen ions. It releases hydrogen ions and produces H3O plus. Meanwhile, the base will release hydroxide ions. That's what this guy Arrhenius says. And he's, he's pretty much right. He's, you know, for, and if you just think about water, he's kind of right. He's, he's, he, the model works for water, but, uh, it breaks if you deal with stuff that isn't water. And then, uh, these other guys come along, Bronsted and Lowry. Bronsted is, you know, the first one who kind of does this. And he says, an acid donates a hydrogen ion. What's the difference between release and donate? Um, the spelling as far as I'm concerned, but this is, this is the canonical definition. It's the very, like the, the letter of the word, Bronsted our Lowry acid is a proton donor. It donates a hydrogen electron. It gives it up, donates it. The Bronsted Lowry base is a proton acceptor. It accepts the hydrogen ion accepts it, accepts it, accepting, donating and accepting. And Arrhenius was like, it produces this hydronium ion. It releases its hydrogen ion. The Lewis definition, which again, we're going to ignore it for now, but it's um, the acid uh, the Lewis definition deals with electron pairs, a, a donating and accepting electrons. And, and it switches the, which is the donor and which is the acceptor from the Bronsted Lowry definition. So Bronsted Lowry acids donate a proton. Lewis acids accept electrons. Okay. We're, and we're going to forget about that. Bronsted Lowry acids donate a proton. Bronsted Lowry base accepts a proton accepts a proton. And we get that, the, the, that thing is a proton from the, like if you look at the periodic table, where's the periodic table? The hydrogen is up in the corner and there's a, it has a mass of 1.008, which means that it has in the nucleus, like just one massive nuclear particle. And that massive nuclear particle cannot only either be a neutron or a proton, but we know that it has to be a proton because it has an atomic number of one. And so if that hydrogen ion then loses that single electron, that's kind of orbiting or like existing in its weird electron cloud around the nucleus, 
loses the electron, then we're left with just that proton in the nucleus, from the nucleus of the hydrogen. So the, the hydrogen, uh, hydrogen atom without its electron is just a proton. And so that's, that's what we, that's, that's why this says proton donor, because that's just the nucleus of a hydrogen atom, which is the hydrogen ion, which is just, it's just a proton. So we use those interchangeably, hydrogen ion and proton. We use it, they're, they're, they're interchangeable. They're just, they're interchangeable. All right, more of the same with a different picture and different words. The Arrhenius model of acids and bases was broadened by the Bronsted-Lowry model. Uh, and the Lewis acid-base model is the most general. Um, it can include things that don't have hydrogen in them, and so we're going to ignore it for now. Same picture, different colors, because some people can't see green and red. Acid-base systems. Arrhenius says that an acid is an H3, H3O plus or H plus producer, and a base is an OH minus producer. Bronsted-Lowry says that an acid is a proton donor, and a base is a proton acceptor. Those are the ones we care about. Here are their pictures. That's how they looked. They're all dead now. They're they lived around the beginning of the 19th, or around the beginning of the 20th century. An Arrhenius acid is any substance that releases H plus ions as the only positive ion, the only positive ion in the aqueous solution. So hydrogen chloride is an Arrhenius acid with water. The HCl will donate, will sorry, will release its H plus and produce H3O plus as the only positive ion. Okay. So acids, according to Arrhenius, in aqueous solutions form hydronium ions, H3O plus, just like this. And this is, so in chemistry, we like to use arrows to only indicate the movement of electrons. And here, here we're moving an entire proton. <clears throat> My chemistry professors would be appalled, appalled that, that this graphic exists, simply appalled. But that's what, that's what it is indicated. It, uh, the proton jumps over, <clears throat> the proton jumps over to the oxygen. So we have the acid over there, and uh, Arrhenius bases form hydroxide ions in aqueous solution. So acids form hydronium ions, bases form hydroxide ions. So here we have ammonia, and it's going to form ammonium with water. Uh, so we have ammonia with water, it's going to form ammonium with hydroxide. So it forms a hydroxide ion by grabbing hold of one of those protons, becoming NH4 plus and OH minus. Arrhenius bases and their properties. According to the definition, a base is a substance whose water solution yields hydroxide ions as the only negative ions. So an acid, according to Arrhenius, is a substance that yields only H plus or H3O plus as its positive ion and a base is a substance whose water solution yields only hydroxide ions as, the, as its negative ions. So here's a question, are, NH, are NaOH and NH3 plus, or NH3 huh, considered, are these considered to be Arrhenius bases? Question. Give me a, uh, like a green check or a party trumpet if they are. Anything? Reactions. Green check. I got a green check. Yes, they are. So some more properties of bases. Bases are electrolytes. So they will 
um, change the electrical conductivity of water. Here's a dissociation equation for sodium hydroxide. This should look pretty familiar. We get sodium ions and hydroxide ions in solution. Here's a dissociation equation for NH3. We have ammonia gas, we add it to water, and we end up, end up with aqueous ammonium and hydroxide ions. So the ammonia grabs an electron, or, sorry, grabs a proton from the hydro, uh, from, from the water, grabs a proton from the water and forms ammonium and hydroxide. So both of those compounds produce only hydroxide as the negative ion. So yes, they are Arrhenius bases. Bases will cause acid base indicators to turn a characteristic color. Um, they'll neutralize acids. So sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid will yield uh, with our double replacement reaction. They'll turn into sodium chloride and H2O. And finally, water solutions of bases taste bitter and feel slippery. They taste bitter and feel slippery. And so, um, actually, there are all kinds of things in, in nature that taste bitter, right? They taste bitter. So they, um, there are drugs and things like that. Things like caffeine tastes bitter. And that's because those compounds will accept a proton. They are basic accept a proton or they will yield hydroxide ions as the only negative anion. Bronsted Lowry said things a little bit differently than Arrhenius. An acid is any substance that donates a proton and a base is any substance that accepts a proton. And so what we end up with is this system of conjugate acids and bases. So like an acid becomes a base, sort of. It, it doesn't become a base, it becomes its conjugate base. So this acid will donate its proton and become a thing that can accept a proton. And we call that thing that, we call that thing that after the acid donates its proton, it becomes the conjugate base. And the base, is any substance that will accept a proton. So every acid-base interaction has an acid and a base. The acid becomes the conjugate base, which means the base becomes the conjugate acid. So here, hydronium has an extra proton. It can donate a proton. So this is the conjugate acid of water. The conjugate acid of water. And meanwhile, chloride can accept a proton. It has this negative charge. It can accept a proton and be like perfectly happy. So since it can accept a proton, this is a conjugate base of this acid HCl. And this thing here, this, this, this looks like a squiggly D with a plus sign, and this is a squiggly D with a minus. This means uh, partial. This is chemistry notation for partial positive and partial negative. And these refer to something called a dipole moment, the dipole moment, where um, the electronegativity, the electronegativity of chlorine and of oxygen make it so that in these molecules, all the electrons in all the bonds that are shared, all the shared electrons in the bonds of this molecule, they tend to kind of hang out mostly only on one side of the, on the chlorine side of the HCl and on the oxygen side of the H2O. So those electrons have a, a negative charge and the region with the most electrons gets that partial negative and the region away from that gets the partial positive. So there's a partial negative on the oxygen side 
and a partial positive on the hydrogen side of the of the water and it'll be kind of the same on the HCl and so then what happens is those there's the the proton wants those electrons it's like hey there's all these electrons over here let's just jump on over there and hang out and have a little hydronium ion party and that's what happens so once again the acid forms a conjugate base the base forms a conjugate acid same picture different colors Ooh, hold on. Now we have different molecules. Now we have NH3, which is a base, so it's going to be accepting a proton. And we have H2O, which is an acid. Wait, hang on. Here H2O is a base. Here H2O is an acid. So it's, it's going to be behaving like an acid, so it's going to be donating a proton. And it's just H2. Remember when we said that water was low like low key ionic and this is what we're seeing here again is water is going to be splitting into H plus and OH minus and it'll donate that proton and here we said the same thing so it'll it'll become H3O plus and OH minus sorry H3O plus and Cl minus because it's the chlorine that's donating the proton but anyway so here water is behaving like an acid and with the acid, water is behaving like a base. So when there's a base involved, water is an acid. When there's an acid involved, water is a base. All right. And the dipole moments have switched. So like, it hasn't really, like the electrons are still hanging out on the oxygen side of the molecule. It's just that the hydrogens are on the other side. So, same thing that kind of happened before happens again that proton jumps over to the ammonium ion the base forms the conjugate acid the acid forms the conjugate base so hydroxide is the conjugate base of water and hydronium is the conjugate acid of water so water has both a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. And that'll change based on, uh, according to what else is acting on the system. So when water's in the presence of a base, it forms a conjugate, it behaves like an acid. When water's in the presence of an acid, it behaves like a base. A base will form a conjugate acid an acid will form a conjugate base. Come on. There we go. Come on. All right, same picture, different patterns. And th there are a bunch of different water molecules. There's a, like, this isn't, these, these aren't the only water molecules. There are a bunch of others. There are so many others that like it's really difficult actually to talk about the concentrations of what's going on here without resorting to really huge numbers and we'll we'll bring that up again in a moment um but right now let's let's revisit our definitions again so we have bronsted lowry who says that acids are proton donors so they donate protons bases are going to accept protons so here we have HCl and H2O. HCl is the acid, it's donating its proton to H2O, which is the base in this situation. HCl, the acid, forms its conjugate base, Cl minus, while H2O, the base in this situation, forms its conjugate acid, H3O plus. So, uh, let's see. There's the acid, there's the base, there's the conjugate base, and there's the conjugate acid. And we call it a base because, like we said, it can accept a proton, and this one we call an acid because it 
can donate a proton. And, and it's the conjugate, it's the, like they occur in pairs like this. They don't, the conjugate acids and bases don't just exist on their own. They just, sometimes, well, they, something has to happen. All right. And here we have water acting as a base, HNO3 acting as an acid. We have the conjugate acid and we have the conjugate base. Here we have the base and water is the acid. Then we have the conjugate acid and water or OH minus is the conjugate base of water. So water can form both a conjugate base and a conjugate acid. Water can behave both as an acid and a base, so we have this special term for it. We say that it's amphoteric. Amphoteric can be an acid or a base. Acid or a base. Amphoteric. I would write that down. That's going to come up. Did I mention there's a cahoot? There's a cahoot. All right. Let's have conjugate bases for each of the following. For HF, after it donates the proton, we get its conjugate base. So HF is an acid, it will donate its proton, and we get the conjugate base F minus. H3O, H3, sorry, H3PO4 is an acid, it's phosphoric acid that will donate a proton and become its conjugate base H2PO4 minus. Finally, we have the hydronium ion, which is the hydronium ion. And after it donates its proton, it becomes water. H2O is the conjugate base of hydronium. All right. Polyprotic. So this this middle one uh, has phosphoric acid has more than one hydrogen ion, has more than one, and we call those things polyprotic because they have more than one proton. Polyprotic means many protons. It's many protonic, many protonic. All right, conjugate acid. For each of the following. So the, each of these will behave as a base and accept a proton. Br minus will accept a proton and become HBr. HSO4 minus will accept a proton and become H2SO4. And CO3 2 minus will accept a proton and become HCO3 minus. Finally, we have the pH scale, which remember what I said about dealing with tiny, tiny concentrations of things? Well, here's this guy, Soren Sorensen, and he came up with uh, this way of doing that. And I'm just going to jump over to, uh, let's see here, period six. Let's make a new page. Let's make it math and science class notes. This is going to be uh, acids, bases, and pH. lowercase p, uppercase h, we talked about Arrhenius acids and bases, we talked about Bronsted, Lowry acids and bases, and we're going to talk about pH scale. And the logarithm. Logarithm homework. Homework is going to be Cornell notes for the unit. And also there is a worksheet. <clears throat> That's on Google Classroom. Okay. I'm going to insert some space here to give myself room. 
because I need space to do this. All right, whiteboard space, whiteboard space. Okay, so remember how there were like a bunch of extra water molecules in um, around that, that one chemical equation where there were pictures of like, I think it was hydrogen chloride and water. And then there were a bunch of other water molecules just hanging out, not being affected. And, um, so remember that, you know, we, we talked about this, um, this kind of equilibrium condition that water uh, dissociates into H plus and OH minus at, um, at a concentration of um, It's like 10 to the minus seven moles per liter. Um, so this is gonna be like 10 to the minus seven of this, 10 to the minus seven moles per liter. And this is also 10 to the minus seven moles per liter. So that's, those are like tiny, huge numbers, right? Like tiny, huge. So that's like, you know, that's like 0 0.000001, right? Um, it's tiny, huge, and it's not fun to talk about like these tiny, huge numbers. So this guy Sorensen comes along and he's like, well, what if we use this thing, the logarithm, to deal with these log, so we're gonna, we're gonna say, like, we're gonna make it a negative log. So the inverse log, a log is a special kind of, it's like, you know how multiplication and division are like inverses of one another? Well, the logarithm and the exponent, so here's an exponent, 10 to the seven is an exponent. One over 10 to the seven is like, you know, the inverse of an exponent. And uh, we can have uh, this, this, uh, like the log is also, it's like the division form of the exponent. If multiplication is the exponent, the log is division, if that makes sense. So the log of 10 to the seven That's actually one over seven is the log of 10 over seven. All right, yeah, all right. One over seven is the log, is, the, is one over the log of 10, so that's, no, 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 sorry. Ah. So, um, one over 10 to the seven, is 10 to the negative seven, right? So one over a uh, log of 10 to the seven is the negative log of 10 to the seven. Okay. So we have the negative log of uh, the concentration of H plus. And we write concentration of H plus by putting a square bracket around H plus, and that means concentration of H plus. Square brackets mean concentration in moles per liter. Remember when I said we'd come back to concentration? 
we're coming back to concentration. So the negative log of H plus, sorry, the negative log of the concentration of H plus is the pH. And that's what that P stands for, actually. There's some, you know, like for a while, people were like, oh, it means power of, power, like the power of hydrogen or the potential of hydrogen. Power or potential. of hydrogen but no that's not that's not that's not what chemistry settled on because chemistry uses this this abbreviate this p the lowercase p always means negative log equals lowercase p <laughs> the negative log negative logarithm is a lower is lowercase p lowercase p is negative logarithm so the negative log of the concentration of h plus is the ph it is the ph so if we have so the negative log of the concentration of H plus. So say we have a pH, so that's, that's the pH, right? That's the pH. So if, if we have a pH of three, what's the concentration of H plus? What's concentration of H plus? How do we, how do we, how do we go from the one thing to the other? So, so let's remind ourselves about the properties of the logarithm. Okay. So negative log Concentration, I'm still going to write, I'm writing this over and over again, negative log concentration of H plus equals pH. All right. What this means is log base 10. Base of the logarithm. So this number is the power to which ah, I got too close to the edge. The power to which The log base gets raised power to which the log base gets raised is that number. And if it's, it's a negative log, it'll be the negative three. So like, so if pH is three, concentration of H plus equals 10 to the minus three moles per liter. power to which the log base gets raised is, so here's the log base, here's the, so like negative log of uh, 10 to the minus 
8 equals 8. Power to, so negative log of 10 to the minus 2 equals 2. Negative log of 10 to the 3 equals negative 3. Negative 3. That this this won't you probably won't get a concentration of a thousand moles per liter in an you can't right because water limits water water is only like fifty five and the point decimal uh, moles per liter it's only about fifty five moles per liter water um, so this is this is not no, no, not a realistic example. <clears throat> Um, so the negative, uh, negative log of, you know, it, 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 you can, you can have, so you can, so suppose we're given a concentrate or a concentration in moles per liter and we were asked to calculate the pH. So let's suppose we have a negative log and so, so then we take the negative log of that thing and we can find the pH. So let's look at an example from the worksheet. Let's look at one of these examples. So uh, here, okay, here we have a concentration of H plus and concentration of OH minus. Oh, we, we should, okay, let's look at a concentration of OH minus. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that'll, that'll be fun. Um, so this concentration of OH minus says 4.27 times 10 to the minus 2. So we have a concentration of OH minus equals 4.27 times 10 to the negative 2, which is 0 0.0427. Zero point zero four two seven. There's one other thing that I forgot to mention. pH plus pOH is equal to fourteen. This is an important definition. This is from I think it's from Sorensen, and he got it because like because of this. In neutral water these two things balance out. So the concentration of OH minus is this. So I'm going to take the negative log, the concentration of OH minus, and I'm going to get the POH. So that negative log is so I'm going to take the negative log of 0 0.0427 moles per liter and I'm just going to plug that into my calculator all right so in order to do that here's what I'll do down here at the bottom there's this negative sign in parentheses. It's not the same as the minus. It's not the same as the minus. It's a minus in parentheses, and that makes the thing negative. Then I'm going to find the log button. My calculator has this button that says ln log. ln is a logarithm that's not base 10. ln equals the natural log, which is base e. That's base E. Um, e is, uh, is this the saying, o Euler's number.
it's worth looking up, but it's all an aside. Like this is, this is if you this is just if you if you plug if you use the natural log to try to calculate pH, everything will go wrong. Everything will go wrong because that would be you know then you you'd be like the power to which then you're finding the power of two to get that value and that's the wrong it's the wrong logarithm it's the wrong logarithm <clears throat> so I have to hit my ln log button twice I hit it the first time ln comes up I hit it the second time log comes up and then I can just plug in that number 0 0.0427 that gives me this value, 1.369. I have three significant figures, so 1.37. 1 1.37. I'm going to switch back to orange. 1.37. And that's the POH. Up here, remember, pH plus POH equals 14 pH plus POH equals 14. POH is 1.37. pH plus 1.37 equals 14. So my pH is going to be 14 minus 1.37. which is 12.63. 12.63 is the pH. Is that kind of clear? I see a green check, but I think it might just be left over. All right. And this is, this is the hard, the most difficult thing in the unit. This is the most difficult thing in the unit, which is why I'm introducing it right now because we'll have time to sort this out, but it is also in the assignment today. So we'll have some time to practice it. Um, all right. That is, I think, pretty much all we're gonna get through today. Yeah, this is just more stuff about, we'll talk more about this later. Um, so I'm going to stop recording because uh, our next, our next thing, our next thing is a Kahoot. We get to have a Kahoot. We get to have a Kahoot. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to stop recording. Stop recording.